Welcome to Iris After Hours. Casual conversations with inspirational speakers off the clock. We are here again in the studio with Sandra Martin Hicks. Come on. She is an incredible author and filmmaker. She has won 52, 52 awards, I believe. Can you believe that? She's had her own production company for 32 years, Heartstone what? Pictures, and this is her second time in the studio with us. We're so excited. She's been sharing extensive storytelling knowledge with us at the office. Come on. You're going to see a significant improvement in Iris Media because of Sandra? <laughs> yes, we hope. We pray. Come on. And... Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Hi, Sandra. Again. Happy to be here. Come I feel on. Like you've been here a lot since you left, actually. I've been here a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from Malibu to All Pasadena. Come on. Pasadena. That's a waste. Going to Santa Barbara today. That's but before that, I came from Texas. What yeah. do you do on those long drives? I fly. <laughs> Are you flying to Santa Barbara? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks Santa Barbara to LA is a long drive. I'm no, thinking Texas. An hour and a half. What I do is I listen to music. Have you ever driven from Texas to California? I've driven from Oklahoma to California when I lived out oh, here back in the late seventies. I want to do that. Me too. In a convertible. I want to do it oh, in a convertible. Oh gosh, yes. Yep. Great idea. Can't find anybody to do it with me. I was hoping you'd say you'd listen to podcasts. Oh, I listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Come on. I do. <laughs> like this one. No, I have to do that one. I can watch. I like to see. I like to see the people. Come on, yeah, Yay. video podcast. That's what it's all about these days, Christy. Video, video podcast. Video, 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 Come on. video. Really? Picture. I really don't agree with that. The I'm thinking the talkies. about the talkies. shifting this to an audio-only podcast. Oh, okay. Come on, Christy. So you don't have to put on makeup? Yes. Oh. Come on. It's a lot of effort. Crystal, we might have to do that. Okay, can everyone can vote out there on the page if you want to I vote video. change it over for... Um, That's a good idea. <laughs> How many of you actually watch these? <laughs> or listen only. Right. The opposite because if you watch, watch, you do listen and watch at the same time. Like the talkies. Like I'm talking old term when the silent pitches started speaking, they called them the talkies. Yes. Come on. I remember that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we do not remember that. We're not that old. <gasps> yes. Shaka Now listen, Sandra, you are obviously an accomplished filmmaker winning 52 awards. This is crazy. Um, you have been taken around the globe in all sorts of places making films. I want to focus on one story you were telling us about straight off the calf that mm. was amazing, and that's when you were chasing revival, like true revival. Tell us about that. Well, I went to a place called Bougainville. Come on. In June. It's, ne it's near Papua New Guinea, isn't it? It is part of Papua New Guinea, oh, okay. like southeast of Queensland, you know, in Australia. Come on, I'm a Queenslander. And, um, yes, Queensland. What part? Brisbane. Okay. I was born in Toowoomba in Queensland, uh -huh. and I grew up in Brisbane and just south of Brisbane in Beenleigh, yeah. But my favourite part of Australia is Noosa Heads, where the forest oh, yeah. meets the sea, and there's koalas in the trees by the ocean. It's unbelievable. I went to Noosa Heads. <gasps> How good is that? I did. I loved it, and I held a koala. Oh, come I on. I want to hold a koala. The cute. Well, go, go over they there. They are and strange. Like to hold one. They're strange. They're <laughs> cute. Great. Do you know? Do you know koalas spend most of their life drunk? On what? Because they eat the eucalypt no. and it ferments no. in their system. It actually creates like a drunkenness. So that's so they, they are sleep like, all the time. Yes, they're just like drunks. They like literally like spend their life drunk. Do they ever become like angry drunks? Yes. Like, do they, they attack do. You? All, no, they're not humans. But you can hear them fighting each other. Some nights the noise is really freaky when you hear koalas <laughs> fighting. It's like. It's like, like, what the heck is that noise? Wow. Cute yeah. and vicious. Wow. It's weird. No, I've got to tell you a quick story. Yeah. I'm driving along in my car when I live back in Australia, it's not about mate. about you, Nathan. I know it's not about me, but we're on koalas, mate. No, I'm driving along, and then there's a koala crossing the road when I'm driving. I'm, I'm really scared for its life because yeah. we're running out of them in Australia, so I don't want this to get killed. So I just stopped my car in the middle of the road, put the hazard lights on. So so too bad, just stop behind me because I've got to save this koala. I don't want it to get run over. The koala runs over to one of these light poles and it looks like a tree, but you know, it's a steel yeah. round light pole and it starts to jump up and chink, 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 sliding down. <laughs> and this thing's going chink, 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 chink. I'm going, oh my God, what do I do? This poor koala, my car's sitting out there, the traffic's backing up and, he's, and, he, and there's another tree. Throughout. So I try to sort of get him off the pole and I finally sort of, I don't know what I did, but I got him away, and he finally got onto a real tree, and then Bormy just goes clunk, clunk, and up. Oh man, those things can climb. Their, their claws and their fingers just sink into that eucalyptus trees, and 
up he went like in two seconds. But it was a very funny moment seeing this koala go ching, ching, ching. <laughs> I think you should make a film about this, maybe. Come on. A short, a snippet, if yes. you will. But I saved the koala. I don't know how you're going to get the koala to do that. <laughs> oh, but if you could. I oh, know, I have to pay a lot of union fees, I think. Mm. Probably so. Probably I have to get <laughs> the animal so. cruelty people in to make sure I don't do any harm to animals mm. in the filming of this production. I don't know why I'm going here. I'm going to let you make the segue back. To Come on. <coughs> well, close to Australia is a place called Bougainville. Yeah. And I don't think there's koalas in Bougainville, Bougainville but there could be. It's a very small island, and I had never heard of it before, but this is a, a, a great, it's just a great place. Back, uh, I think in the 60s, a, a company called... Um, uh, oh my gosh! I yeah, just no, lost it's it. a, a petrochemical company or no, a mining company. A mining company. Yes, a mining company. Yeah, I know the what it's called. A mining company came in. Yes, and, what is it um, They started uh, mining. Australian mining for, company. Isn't it? Uh, yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. For gold and copper, and it's they have the is second it Rio, richest Rio Tinto. Yes, they have this. It is. They have the second richest copper mine in the world. Gosh, which comes with a lot of gold. So this company was taking a lot of the money out, and because the lands had been redefined, that Bougainville was now part of Papua New Guinea, the Australia company, which is a British company, was taking most of the money. They were getting millions of dollars a day out of there. And I think and they, that, were, and they weren't looking after the land very long. No, they were taking the money, and Papua New Guinea, was the whole infrastructure was growing and booming, and Bougainville was getting pennies. And they weren't. They used cyanide in the processing. Yes, and their land was getting poisoned so, from the cyanide because exactly. they were using a cheaper killing process. Killing the fish, the trees, the women started to have like cervical cancers and losing oh, babies and all. I mean, just all kinds gosh, of things. Gosh, I hate that, don't you? So um, hate anyway, that stuff. a guy, uh, a guy, uh, some of the people came up and said, "You owe us back pay of you know a lot of money," and Rio Tinto went, "Ha ha ha! Not going to happen." So um, these guys got together and they blew up the power part of the of the mine and so anyway it started a it started a civil war mm. um, now what's they, the population the population of Bougainville would be like in the thousands or in the tens of thousands I'm not sure well it was not I don't believe it's a million I mean it's yeah it's a, it's, it's not a thousands big one. or whatever yeah, yeah. I don't remember that but uh, it's a small island yeah but of course with the roads the way they are and it's, it's very like rugged. A Mozambique. No, it's very rugged and tropical and big mountains and uh, yes, it's beautiful, but it's difficult to yeah. you know travel across. But um, so a civil war comes and Papua New Guinea comes in to on the side of Rio Ten, you know, tempted to to uh, who's lining their pockets as well. Exactly, so they did not want the mine to there. stop because they wanted to keep making the money. So Come on. Um, a guerrilla army formed. Uh, the Bougainville Revolutionary Army. And there was a young man who was like 19 at the time. His name was Ishmael. And Ishmael is the single most remarkable human being I have ever met. Whoa. I don't know what it is about this guy, but when wow. you're around him, I said my son was with me at the time, and he said, man, there's something about that guy. When you're around him, it's like a magnet pulling you to him. I said, exactly. And I mentioned to many people and other places that know him. I said, he's like, it was like being with David, a modern day King David. They said, that's what everybody says. Wow. But let me tell you a little about this guy. When he's 19, there's five revivals that have come to Bougainville, major, major revivals. Like the first one, there was a guy, uh, this, this little bitty man, his name was Joshua. He's like maybe five, two, five, three, little bitty, tiny guy. He was a Methodist boy. And one day minding his own business, God just came and struck him just landed on him he just started speaking in unknown languages and fire came all over him and god used him to to spread revival throughout the solomon islands he was known as the son of thunder because anytime he would show up uh, and pray for people like people were raised from the dead the lame would walk the blind would see he would be he would be on a platform like this preaching cessationalism eh? And he would just walk right off the platform and be walking on the air. And I talked to witnesses that saw that. Oh, my god! And then these, uh, so anyway, whenever he That's would come crazy. and these miracles would happen, there was always thunder and lightning would come. But nat- in the real yes. realm. So natural realm. the locals started calling him Son of Thunder. Wow. And then he raised up other guys. This men. is Joshua? Uh-huh. He raised up other guys underneath him, <coughs> excuse me, that they trained. And they were called Sons of Thunder. I mean, there was crazy things and all kinds of revivals that went on over there. And uh, like like there was this one of the islands over there. A bunch of kids went for a, 
the school event, and they ate over there, and they all died. And well, they didn't the understand. Food was poison? No, it wasn't the food. But uh, what happened was is they, God had told them that there was a lot of witchcraft. You know in those places, just like in Africa, there's a yep. lot of witchcraft. And every one of the kids died, so they knew there was a problem. So some intercessors went over there, and deep in prayer, their hands became like shovels. They just took their hand, and it went, and it went straight down to the ground. I mean it like a, like a steel shovel. And they pulled up bones and stuff, you know, where curses. Literally into the ground? What? Yes. Yes. Went, and pulled out bones and stuff. And there's witnesses. There's a lot of witnesses that saw this happen. Oh, my gosh. And, and so they prayed. They consecrated the land back to God, worshiped. And while they were still in this deep place of worship, they said, the Lord says, there's another place a kilometer away on this other island, with their eyes closed, still in worship and prayer, they walked on water a kilometer <gasps> to this other island. Across the sea. Yes. And stuck their <laughs> hand down in there and pulled the same thing out. And no one and no one has died from that kind of thing ever since. I mean, it's just supernatural stuff. Wow. But anyway, so wow. this was one day I'm this kind of... This is what year are we talking about? This was like um, 80s, 70s, 80s. Okay. Wow. You know? But wow. Joshua came in, I guess. I don't know when. But since since Joshua, first, Joshua's still alive. He's like in his low 80s. Yep. So this is probably 50 years ago <coughs> in the 60s. But since this time, there's been five revivals that have, hit uh, that have come to this Bugby place. Wow. Mm -hmm. The one I'm telling you about was like the last one. So anyway, um, back to, to Ishmael. I was, Joshua started all these revivals that came and went. But right. Ishmael... Uh, he was 19. He got saved in one of these revivals. They called this the youth revival. Well, then when the, the revolution started to try to stop their land from, you know, being raped and pillaged. And destroyed. And destroyed. Um, he went to the Lord and he said, Lord, can I fight for my country because I'm a Christian? He didn't know if he could or not. And he didn't hear anything. And one night he heard the Lord say, Ishmael, you can join the, the, the battle. And he thought, okay, it was a joke. Happened the next month. Happened three months in a row. Wow. And he said to his wife, he says, I don't know. I think the Lord is calling me to join this movement. And she said, nah, no, you're crazy. And they went out that day to a like a farm or something. And it's like everything he picked up, like he'd pick up a lamb, it would just break in his hands. It was like Samson. He had like superhuman strength. Oh, spirit, of wife, might, spirit of might. Yes. And so his wife goes, oh, something's happened. I think God must have spoken to you. Whoa. Anyway, bottom line is that he goes out and talks to a man named Francis Ona, who was leading the revolution. And so Ishmael just kind of naturally came into this place of leadership because he would take men out and they would all come back alive. And God was giving him supernatural strategy. So he just kind of became a, you know, the commander wow. of this Bougainville Revolutionary Army. And like um, he said that the Lord spoke to him and said, I'm going to turn the first weapons of the war into your hands. Now, what they didn't have modern weaponry. They had like maybe, you know, fishing guns and maybe a gun with one bullet. But they they were basically fighting st with sticks and stones. Yeah. A modern army with the helicopters and the ARs. Guns, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're, you know. So one night, just to show you the courage this man had, he just went walking right into the enemy camp like he was one of the soldiers. Well, nobody Just would like think... like David did? Yes. Nobody would think anybody would... He must have been in their army because nobody would be that stupid. <laughs> so he walks in and their leaders go, good night. And he goes, yes, good night. Bang, bang. And took their weapons. And as he's running up the hill... Bang, he bang? Killed him. Shot him. Wow. Pulled That's one right. bullet. Shot him. And as he's going up the mountain here, he felt he Whoa. so strongly felt the spirit of the Lord with him, reminding him that he was going to turn the first weapons of the war over to him. Because he says he was like Rambo. This is when the movie Rambo came out. He has these weapons on his back, and he doesn't even know how to use them. They don't know how to use automatic rifles. Of course. So they're on his back, and he's running up. And he said he felt the presence of God so strongly. Now, this is just so counter to what we as modern day believers were thinking, no, God wouldn't do that, but he felt right. the Lord. Yeah, I've kind of so like, then, wait. <laughs> and then, then the guys were telling me, somebody else was telling me when they were in like a banana boat and he was leading uh, some guys, they were in, you know, just those little boats and they saw uh, a helicopter coming with the, you know, the soldiers hanging out with the ARs. And he said, just keep going, just keep going. 
So Ishmael holds on to a rope, and he's standing up, kind of like the pictures you see of George Washington crossing the Delaware. Come on. He's standing there holding that, and as the, the guys come, they open it, fire, and you know these guys can shoot a boat in the water. They just unload their guns. Not one bullet hits the boat or the men, and Ishmael waits. And when he hears the Spirit of God say, Now, Ishmael. Ishmael bends down, he picks up a gun, he fires one bullet, one bullet at this helicopter, and it flies over, hits, and comes down on the side of the, of the shore and crashes. Oh my gosh. Then there's another time when um, he got shot, a guy shoots him right in the forehead, and one of his men comes running to him, Ishmael, Ishmael, oh my gosh, are you okay? He said, I saw that guy shoot you, I saw the bullet come right at your head. And Ishmael said, yes, I felt the bullet, it bounced off his head. I mean, on and on and on, oh, stories wow. like this. But the, this this war goes on for 10 years. Gosh. People are like, one of the cities called Arawa, it had been prophesied that the city, like, that the woods were going to grow up inside the city again. Well, nobody knew what that meant because when the war comes, people flee the city and, like, trees and stuff start growing up inside of buildings because it just... Because it's, it's jungle. Left, exactly, the jungle takes it over. But these poor people spend 10 years living in the jungle, running from place to place. Oh, wow. I mean, like women, you just have to stop and have your babies. And, and they weren't just like setting up living here. They would have to keep moving, moving, moving for 10 years. And then the last three years, it was complete blackout. No where power. it had to be completely black at night. I mean, oh. this place, so that's what I'm saying. These people had nothing but God to to lean on, to depend upon. And, these, and many women say that... Those that knew the Lord, they would go to him and pray the minute they got pregnant. You know, God, you've got to help us when they have these babies. And they said the Lord would be with them and just took care of them having these babies. And, of course, some people that didn't believe That's they so were beautiful. losing the babies. And But even after the war was over in 10 years when they came to a peace treaty, it still took several years before the people came back into the city because they didn't trust the peace agreement. Um both sides or the other side wasn't really keeping their agreement but anyway wow. they're trying to heal now and they were as part of the peace treaty they were promised that they would have the right to vote for independence and i think that's going to come up in 2020 oh but wow so um, they still haven't had got that yet wow. yeah i i believe that ishmael will probably be the president, the first president. Uh, when they become yeah independent he's just gosh he's just a remarkable and you met him oh yeah yeah he he took us out in the jungle to find this joshua son of thunder i took a shofar so from did... israel and gave to ishmael as a gift oh. and i spent a lot of time i did interview him we did video interviews with him he just when i would Can get we around see him, that? oh yeah we i would get around him and i would Try not to cry. I have several videos of him. I, while I was in Bougainville, I did a blog post called Jesus in the Jungle. And it's on my web so, website, oh, heartstonepictures.com. Uh, com. And there are there are some clips of him. But there was a documentary done back in the early part of the war in the 80s. And it was called um, The Coconut Revolution. And Ishmael was featured in this. And there's a clip when Ishmael is... He's this brave warrior who trained other men how to fight. He was such a Rambo, such a brave heart. But in this video, he says, I'm not proud to be a soldier and carry a gun. I'm only proud of one thing, that my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and all I Whoa. want to do is preach the gospel. Wow. So here is this brave warrior who shows battle scars all over from all that he went through. And I'm in church with this man, and he's leading worship weeping before the Lord. Wow. You see why he's just like David? Yes. Mm. He's this barefoot man, never saw him wear shoes, just a very simple man, but wow, the most powerful human being I ever met. I just, I can't quit thinking about him. Gosh. Did so, you do a film man. about this? I videoed no, a lot of stuff. we are going to do a film about That's this. Right. <laughs> we're going to make a feature film yeah. about Ishmael. So oh, I have that's a, what we're, we're talking about. We're taking it to Bougainville next year to so, research his so what, script. what it is, is I've got a, I would like to do a seven-part show see what okay. what's any more instead of movies everybody loves serials you know yeah. like you know when you, you release them oh, all the time because you can you do a lot more serial, the yeah. podcast? you do a lot more uh detail character development and all that other so exactly i've blocked it out just one thing yeah i blocked it out on the story we're working on the story to do a seven part uh series on this and um i think it needs to come out before their vote for independence the world needs to know mm. about these people because 
it's it's almost like an Israel story because you know Israel's this little bitty place exactly. in the map. Exactly, it was and reminding me of that. Bougainville is this little bitty place in the map, but God is with them. Yeah, and God is returning all these natural things that He gave them, like the gold and copper and everything, back to the Bougainvillians to, to you know, to wow. thrive. And it's just it just shows you how when God is with the people, what they can do and what they can live through and so and I don't know he, they he just does supernatural things exactly like, there's so many stories from the wars in Israel of supernatural things happening like wind coming and and sound of sound of armies marching when there were no armies there like armies fleeing away from the Israelites in the 67 war and all that have you heard of that story yes yeah I believe wow. all that yeah Pacifists would probably have a bit of an issue with this. <laughs> Talking about like supernatural power coming behind. Come on. But maybe peacemakers wouldn't. Maybe we need to turn our pacifism into peacemaking. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, all I know is Just that a thought. it's crazy stuff that went on, but God was clearly with them. And um, these people know something of God that I don't know. <sighs> I uh, I felt like when I left, I felt like I left a piece of my heart, and I can't quit thinking about him. And I do, I feel like I have a job um, to do over there. One of the pastors said to me, he says, "Well, I talked to the Lord about you," and I said, "Oops, do I need to leave?" <laughs> he said, "No, the Lord says that you will do great things for my people," and I knew then that that means a story because that's that's what I have to give to them yeah. is to share their story with the world, and um, that's what I want to do. I I just I feel like I have to do that. Wow. And so it's got to be done in the right time. So So you got much so more I'm doing than you this bargained project. for. Well, I'm doing this project, you know, with Heidi. I feel like that's the first one. And when this story yeah, with so Heidi yeah. is called Walk With Me, yeah. when that, we finish this. That's I, season one. That's season this one. This could Walk potentially with me. be season one. No, this would be another show. Yeah. See, we're, you know, and so I want to do um, Bougainville. Wow. Called, I don't know if we call it Son of Thunder or what, but... That little Joshua man was amazing. So let me tell you, he has seen such great revivals. So when so, I was there... You said he was in the jungle. They, they went and church. He well, still he, lives there? He was in the jungle, and Ishmael helped us find him. Joshua, and, he's a white guy. No, he's a little black man, about 5'2", five, 5'3". Oh, five, so he... Oh, okay, he's he the son of thunder. And he was a native to yes, Bougainville. Yes, and he's like oh, 82, I thought he was a missionary. Mm -mm. No, okay, no. right. So we brought him out, and now this just shows you... We bring him out of the jungle, and you have to you have to drive through rivers. Those the roads are actually rivers, and it started raining because we were deep into the jungle. It's a brutal trip, you know, to get there. Coming back out, oh my gosh, the, we got to do this. The water starts rising, and of course, being with Ishmael, I felt like I was in safe as hands as you could get. <laughs> he was studying the water, saying, "No, yeah. we can't cross. Yes, we can cross." So every time we would take those jeeps through the water, the jeep was Toyota, like your mom drives. We started going Land, through Land that cruiser. water. Land cruiser, yeah. mate. All of us in that car were praying, praying, praying. Get through, get through. Get <laughs> Don't get away. washed down the stream. So, one, the water is so high, we can't cross. And so there's a few cars. There's not a lot of cars in Bougainville, but there was a few trucks on the other side. They were parked, and oops, and it was a hill, and we were both kind of angled down, and here's the water. And so as we're waiting, people are out of the car talking. A freak accident happened, and the brake went off. And the, the truck came down and ran over a young girl, like newly married. So she's probably 16, 17. And as soon as it happened, we saw it happen. We saw it happen. And um, the natives, they just started wow. wailing and crying. And that fast, they said, it's the white people's fault because they brought the son of thunder out of the jungle. It's like, oh, my gosh, how do those people know he was over here? It was that fast, wow. that fast. I mean, that they travel faster than texting, I'm telling you. So we begin to pray and worship and try wow. to, you know, calm things down. But So anyway, we bring him back to Arawa and interviewed him. And um, he prayed over us. And he, he prayed that he said, God, you gave me what the first apostles had. And I'm praying that over her. I want you to give her the same thing that the apostles had. You know, the signs you. and the wonders. Yes, he prayed that. Wow. And I don't know, you know, and he's praying it in pigeon. Yep. So I don't know. Somebody transcribed it for Pigeon me. English, yeah. <clears throat> and then a few days later, there was a meeting of all the pastors on the island. And um, all these pastors were there. And they were going to uh, pray over this this pastor I was with. And I was standing in the back of the room with the camera. And the 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 man that had headed up the last revival, it was the Laughing Revival, where a lot of laughing brought a lot of healing. This is after everybody lived through that horrible 10 years. Wow. And, wow. And he pointed awesome. to How much me, does that make sense? And he God, pointed to me and God he knows said, what he's doing. you. 
And I turned around, and I, I didn't know what he meant. But he said, you need to come down here and pray. We're going to pray over you. So all of these pastors in the church are singing revival, God, ring revival. Whoa. But five of the pastors came up and put their hands on us and prayed. And he said, the spirit of revival is on you now. And everywhere you go, you will spread revival. First to your family, then to your church, then outward across the world, you will spread revival. And of course, I'm bawling and squalling and crying thinking, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> and when I was in Israel wow. with your mom, I was telling her, I said, I don't really understand this idea because I'm a filmmaker. I don't go around preaching in front of the thousands like you do and putting my hands on people. And she goes, well, you do now. <laughs> okay. So then when I went home, I began to see that, you know, this thing called imparting? Yeah. Well, Impartation. I don't get all that. I yep. know people do it, and but I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I guess I don't have to get it. So all these people had been praying for me on the trip went, we want it, we want it, we want it. And I'm, okay. So I began to think, okay, I think what it is is, we think that we have to see these things all full and big and large and really in our life before we have it to pass on. And I began to think, you know what? It's it's like I'm a suitcase. Because when that, <laughs> let me say, it's your suitcase, mm -hmm. and I just have to show up and open the suitcase, and God does what he does. Because while we were interviewing this little man, Joshua, he's talking to the person in interview him, and I don't know what he's saying because it's pigeon. And it's like 198 degrees, and I'm sweating in my eyes, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> just hold the camera steady. And I heard him say, uh, Oral Roberts, T.L. Osborne, and Brenham. No and way. when he said those words... He knew those names. Well, when he said those words, I, I started to kind of shake, and I started to cry, and it felt like warm oil went through the top of my head, through my whole body. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> And the Lord the said, because I did not know why I was going to Bougainville. I just knew the Lord said to go, but I didn't know why. Mm. I so mean, you, now, you talk about faith. So you took your cameras, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and I went not knowing why I was going. Yeah. But it was to see this story because I've got to go back. But while, when he said that and the oil came all over me, I, uh, the Lord, I heard the Lord so clearly say, now you know why you're here. <sighs> America poured into this man. And revival spread throughout the Solomon Islands. And it has stayed pure because oh. people haven't, it's too hard to get to Bougainville and you got to know about it. It's you know, isolated. the white man didn't go over there and take it over and start ruining it. No. It, stayed, it stayed pure and it's just erupted many times. Yeah, it's not on the way to anywhere. No. And he said, so <laughs> I'm giving it to you now and I want you to take it back to the West. Wow. I know. And I'm like, what? See, now this is making sense because I'm not... You know, I, I don't go around doing that. I'm a media person, so I haven't known what to do with it. So I, came, I went home, and I had a <clears throat> what I call a prayer and prophecy night where people come, and we pray over them and prophesy. And, and so I kind of, as I stood up and I said, I don't, I'm just going to kind of like impart what I got. I don't really know what this means, but I impart it. And <laughs> I had several women come to me crying, and they said, well, that's the first time we ever felt the love of God in our life. Wow. And I went, what? Oh, come on. What? So then like I would pray body. over people, and they would f feeling, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Whoa. All right. So then, okay. There, then I began to have like 12 of us would get together. and it's so amazing that you just went with it, though. Even well, that's the way I do. I just go. I don't care. Even you didn't understand, understand. It. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to do if it. If we wait people... for me to understand it, we'll let, never let, get anything done. Yeah, please. Don't, don't let that get in the way. So then I said to my friends, I... I, God gave me the names of 12 people. 12 of us gathered together in my friend's house. And bang, bang, Whoa. bang. God began to touch one person at a time, and even me. And we all watched each other change right in front of our eyes. I don't know what he was doing. Then last weekend, I was at this, uh, like a prayer retreat kind of thing and people were talking this whole message that this guy was talking about was don't hold a fence don't hold a fence we did a, a lot of work on letting go of a fence letting wow. go of a fence letting Very go of a fence subject, that and one. praying about not being offended don't be offended it's like storing up in your bank account not to be offended okay and then after a couple of days of this and a lot of prayer and everything the woman running it says to me Sandra nobody knows you're going to do this and she hadn't told me but she said I think you need to come and impart 
to everybody the upper room experience. Well, I blurted out crying, but I wasn't feeling anything. Wow. So you just, when she said it, you started crying straight yes. away. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you didn't know why? No. Well, I knew it was the presence of God. Presence yeah, yeah. of God makes me cry. But no direct. But I wasn't like yeah. having emotion. Yeah. Okay. Sovereign. Okay. Wow. So I walk out and she said, everybody get around you. So we got down, I got down on the floor and just started to, to pray. <clears throat> and a lot of people are on the floor and I'm not sure what happens, but people were sobbing and crying so hard that when they got up, there wasn't teardrops. There was puddles of tears all over the room. Oh. So this is the revelation I had because wow. this has nothing to do with me, believe me. But listen to this. In John 17, Jesus said, I pray for them all to be joined together as one. This is out of Brian Simmons' The Passion Translation, which oh, yes. is the most amazing translation I've ever found. I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me. Wow. For the very glory you have given to me, I have given them. And here we go. So that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity, and the world will be convinced that you have sent me. Wow. So that they will experience perfect unity, and the world will be convinced Goodness. that you have sent me. So let me tell you what happened in that room. Wow. The person that was holding this meeting, there's a common denominator with her. Wherever she is, there's always tremendous love and tremendous unity. And what I begin to see is that when there is love and unity, oh my gosh, that's like an atomic bomb. Wow. It is so powerful. When you have love and unity, it sets an atmosphere where God can come in and just, as your mother says, wreck us. Mm -hmm. Just pour out on everybody. And that's why all of us are around the room crying and leaving tears on the room because there was such unity there wow. and such love. So this is, it's like this, you know, like if, like if we were smoking, you know how the smoke rises? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's like when we were all in that room in unity, it was like, I said to my friend, I don't understand what's happening. And she goes, good, if you knew you'd mess this up. <laughs> I said, what are we carrying? And she said, him. And I went, duh, duh, him. It is him. So whatever the him that I know that I've experienced, it's like that aroma comes up. Whatever the him of you you carry, because you carry something different, that rises. Whatever you oh. carry, it rises. Now, it gets up in there. And as we were like praying and worshiping, I'm making all this up, okay? I'm just yeah. making this up. I haven't heard anybody say this, so forget about it if it's crazy. But this <laughs> occurred to me yeah. last night when I was laying in bed thinking about all these experiences. It's like our that song, Let Your Praises Rise. It's like our spirits rise, and the, the hymn you carry, and the hymn you carry, and the hymn I carry, they get up there, and it just kind of all goes together, and then it comes back down on us like a cloak, like a blanket. Wow. And that's how I'm getting a greater revelation of his love, and you'll get a greater, because that's what ultimately revival is, is a greater revelation of his love. Yes. So when you get in this room, when it's love and unity, I don't know, it's kind of like it releases all that God is in all of us, and it just kind of mingles around, and we all get a little taste, and wow. I don't know if any of this is true or not, but this is the, this is kind of the visual I see, because otherwise I can't explain it. Yeah, yep. I mean, I really can't explain it, but I, this is what I know. I came back from Bougainville and Israel and Africa. Something happens to me when I go to these places. Something would happen to all of us mm. when we go. And when you come back, you bring it, and you're bringing that more of him that you know. And that's what I think gets on other people. If any of that makes sense, you can see why I'm not teaching Bible school. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a filmmaker. But no, it's incredible. From my experience, it's, yeah. you know what I begin to think about. And it wasn't your choice. God just said, "I want." God chose you. But I'll tell you further, further. I've been married 35 years, and I am fiercely independent. I kind of live my own life and do a lot of my things. I travel a lot. My husband's is, he's more cerebral. He's an engineer. He's rock steady. He's solid. And I'm, 
you know, I miss risk taker, I miss artsy, I miss this, I miss that. And I begin to think, you know, I think I'm cheating myself. Because this whole love and unity thing, if it's going to apply to my friends and it's going to apply to a meeting, this has to apply to my home life as well. Come on. So I begin to think, I really need to work on maximizing unity in my family mm. and not be such a renegade and not be so independent and share more of myself and, and take the other one. Just, you know what I mean? It's unity. Power is in unity. And that's why Jesus said, by the unity, others will know you sent me. See, what makes people not interested in religion? When churches are fighting, when Christians are squabbling, yeah. when there's disagreement, and backbiting and talking trash about one another. That's what turns people off, and that's why, honestly, if we were all living in unity, like, I'm very blessed and very fortunate, and then I have, I have like this small group of friends, we call ourselves bands of brothers, you know, we just... It's such unity because there's no competition. There's no backbiting. They celebrate my victories. They're, they're yeah. behind me. They pray for me. They support me. They cheer. And the same for them. When it's them, we all cheer for them. We support them. We pray for them. We cry with them. And we all do that for each other. Man, I'm telling you, that's like steel, you know? Yeah. And so, so if we were like that in the church, you and I couldn't get into church because the line would be too long to get in. <laughs> but why is it they're aligned to get in church? Why is to attendance the, at church coming yeah, down? Yeah, well, can you imagine that? Get into that place of unity. Oh, goody. if we can get into church, we're going to feel peace. We're just going to and, be and it's that actually love. about Jesus, and not wow. about our own kingdom. You know, I don't, yes. I don't know what all this competition is. See, it's like you know, we're all exactly. in media. Mm-hmm. I need to be helping you. I need to be supporting you, and vice versa. We yeah. we're on the same team. It's not about. Who gets the biggest views or who's got the websites? This way. It's all about fighting for the same team. Wow. It's all about getting people into heaven. Yeah. It's, it's not about how big can I get Heartstone pictures or how big can you get Iris after hours. It's about what can we do to help people on their journey and, and all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the soapbox I'm on today because it's just kind of a new revelation to me about how powerful unity is. Wow. So good. So good. So we could start a church, and I could be your preacher then. Right. <laughs> I know. Like hey. Hey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like if you'd pursue another profession. Yeah, maybe. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> time. That was awesome. Wow. Yeah. I feel so inspired wow. by that. Yeah, that is good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And here's the thing. Here's the other revelation I had. Revelation changes everything, and revelation only takes a moment. Mm. Isn't that true? Mm-hmm. When Jesus reveals something it's to like you, like a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like I can say to you, "Oh, Chrislyn, you're so cute, you're so cute." But if you don't believe it, you never believe it. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you think I'm cute? Yes. Oh, but am I really cute? And if yeah. Jesus says to you, "You're cute," you know you're cute. I know that's a silly <laughs> example. But yeah, you but go, you know what I'm talking about. Gosh, I am cute. <laughs> what? Yes. It is. Whenever God speaks these truths to you, that's what changes everything. Yeah, absolutely. I pray for that a lot um, mm. for for other people, for God to tell, God, tell Chrislyn, mm. how do you say Chrislyn? Not not mankind in general, but specifically, uniquely individual. Wow. And you know, one thing I learned from your mother, and I just, I'm like a broken record now praying this. When I was in Israel with your mom, she kept praying that God would take us into the center of his heart. And she's probably prayed that for years. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I liked it. So now I'm praying that over everybody. <laughs> I like it a lot. Come on. You know, I just say, God, take us into the center of your heart and close the door. Wow. You know, and as I would pray that over people, I would begin to see images of things that were on the wall of his heart. And it would be different for each person. Wow. You know, he just he just meets us where we are. Exactly. He's so specific, isn't he? He knows he created us so different and so unique and he ministers to us that way and when you look in the bible jesus said you're going to do greater things than i did well gee whiz how come most of us aren't Mm. what's up with that (laughs) yeah what's the problem oh must be me so what is it well one thing is the unity and the not knowing who we are when we finally get a hold of who we are 
in Christ and who he created us to be, there's so much power and there's so mm. much freedom. It doesn't mean arrogance. No. There's nothing. It's, it, it, and it's stopping the denial of who we are too. That's part of it, isn't it? Of For some reason. It's false humility. We, we, yeah, and we've been split away from who we are. To, to, well, look in the Bible. You have to be like everyone else or something, but actually you're called to be yourself. Jesus said, I'm the way, guys. I'm the light. He didn't yeah. go, now, y'all, you're not going to believe this, and I hate to say it, but the Lord says, I'm the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't do that. <laughs> but it's what we do. No, you're not going to believe this, but, the, you know, this is what I don't know. Oh, stop the false humility stuff. Yeah, stop come on. Stop it. Stop it. Come on. Right? Yeah. And I don't know why. So we think it's like arrogant or acts arrogant or whatever to own who we are. Well, no, it's actually, yeah, mm-hmm. it's actually real humility to say, oh, this is who I am. Yeah, this is me. Uh-huh. And, well, and own it and accept look it. at Heidi. I'm just going to keep using her example since we are Iris. Come here. on. But Heidi totally owns who she is. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. And look what she walks in. Yeah. People get saved every day. People get healed every day. And nobody would say she's not humble. No. Oh, she's amazingly humble. But she knows who she is. Yeah. You know, when I say to her, oh, Heidi, you know, you're one of my heroes, she would go, ah, oh, shucks. She just goes, oh, thanks. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And that's yeah. the right answer. Yeah. So, wow. what do you think the connection is as you're having these experiences and kind of this revelation? How does that tie into your filmmaking? Do you think? Is there an impact that it's having on your storytelling now or the direction you want to go? Well, that's an interesting question because I was saying to a friend this weekend when I was saying, I don't understand all this stuff that's happening. I don't, I don't get it. And she mm-hmm. said... And when she said this to me, I went, wow, that makes a lot of sense. She said, you're having these experiences and you're you're really learning who God is. Because I'm having like amazing experiences. Like a week ago, I'm out here in California. And I am answering your question. There's a backup with this. Yeah. I got on a plane to fly out here. And my plane was at 645 in the morning. I'm not super spiritual at 6.45 in the morning. I'm just still I'm trying to get over that I'm having to get up so early. Bad person at that time. All day long on the plane, my arms and my legs are tingling like they're about to go to sleep, but they never go to sleep. Mm. All day. All day. I'm waiting. My room is not ready, so we go sit in a movie waiting on our room to be ready. And I kept thinking, what's wrong with me? So I would mm. walk around. I'm like, what? Because I, I thought, is it a nerve? What? But why is it my arms and my legs? Anyway, for 12 hours, I have this tingly thing. Then we go to a restaurant, and when I meet, now it starts on my head. And I keep, like, going, because it, now it's my head and my arms and legs. Then we get back to the room, and in the snap of the fingers, all of it stopped. And I get this burning sensation in my stomach. And that's how a lot of times when God's talking to me, I call oh. it the BB, burning belly. You know, Moses said the burning bush. I get the burning belly. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, this couldn't be a back thing because it stopped like that fast and went to my stomach. Wow. Then I started getting these things like, you know, like if somebody were to shock you, how you'd go. Yeah, 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 a little crunches. I didn't feel a shock, but I was like, whoa. Okay, what is this about? <laughs> Two days later, my friend says, hey, let's watch a Randy Clark sermon. He was at Bethel talking about healing. So we pull up this sermon, and the whole sermon is about all the physical manifestations of God. I kid you not, he starts describing the whole tingly thing that I'd been having about how it was a manifestation of God. And I'm like, well, but God wasn't speaking to me, right? Yeah, what does it mean? (laughs) But that went on all day. And so and it's almost like every day some wowie, hey, wowie things were happening, you know? And then, you know, a few months ago, it's like, God takes me to heaven and shows me things. And, and I'm not, you know, this is great, and I love it. Well, here's what my friend said. She goes, Sandra, he is teaching you who he is at a deeper level because you can't really tell, like, the story I'm doing with Heidi. It's called Walk With Me. Well, it's not really a story just about Heidi. It's a story about how God pursued Heidi and how God works through man to accomplish his things on the earth. And it's what friendship with God looks like. Come on. Well, for me to really tell this story the way he wants it told, I really, really 
need to understand him more. I need to know him more. Yeah. You know, whenever you tell, and this is interesting because it doesn't matter what movie I'm working on. You have to crawl inside the skin, because I only tell true stories. You have to crawl inside the skin of the person you're telling their story about, and you have to know their life about as well as they do. I mean, there's people I've gotten to know their life, and if somebody asks them a question, I can answer it before they do, because you have to so get into their life and feel it. That's amazing. You have to feel it and understand it. And and so, like, a lot of the stories I've told have been difficult about people losing a child or whatever, and I go through a grieving process. Wow. It's really crazy. I go through all that, learning these people's story to tell it. Mm-hmm. So when this friend said this, I thought, oh, this makes sense. Because what God said to me was, is from now on, you have to think of me, almost like think of me as your client. I want you to tell the stories from my perspective, tell the stories from my point of view, from my father's heart. So that is what he keeps teaching me about, is his father's heart. It's his father's heart. It's what he talks to me about over and over again so that I can know him deeper and better so that I can tell his story more fully, more effectively. Wow. So that's how I think it relates. Yeah. Wow. I know, and I'm the lucky winner of that one. <laughs> yeah, it's like a direct correlation, isn't it? It's amazing. You know, why, why God called my name for this, I don't know, but I'll tell you this, I'm never going to say why me. I'm afraid he'll say... <gasps> Oh, shoot. We made a mistake. <laughs> we meant to call yeah. Sandra, not Sandra. <laughs> we got a typo. Why you a typo in the heavenly laptop, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. The heavenly email. <laughs> oh, the angel's got the wrong assignment. Who did the mistake? Gabriel, get over here. You know, what? Fix this typo, mate. I heard a guy say to me one time, That's so funny. you know, if I said to God, why did you pick me? He'd say, if you have to ask, I must have picked the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not asking why. I'm just saying thank you, Lord. So guys, don't Your ever eyes ask from the why earth. me. Pick me, pick me, pick, pick me. me. I'm all about it, man. Come on. You know on. we don't have to be. We don't have to be perfect and fantastic and have all the answers to do things. We just have to be willing. Listen, I'm a hot mess on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And w- what's been interesting? <clears throat> what you've been talking about and just hearing you talk off camera as well yesterday and today. And what I've been seeing God doing with other people, just that God sovereignly moves on people. Yeah. Without even sometimes. They, yeah, they, we don't have to be in our holy spiritual moment. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. not even necessarily. And you could even be thinking, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. And all of a sudden you're doing it. People have been telling me that, like, oh, God's doing something on you or picking you. or, And it's just that being available for God to, to you know. Yes. Come and do what he wants through you. Use your body. Use your mind. Use, your, you know. Well, I've had experiences where I was opening my mouth to say A, B, C. Yes. And X, Y, Z comes out. Yes. That's, what? That's, that's the exact thing I'm talking about. What? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And one pe- of them. And, pe- and people are getting ministered to by it and significant things are happening. Well, one time my husband said, I don't know if I told this before, but my, uh, I sat down to tell my husband something that I had done over in Turkey. And I opened my mouth to tell him about something I had seen in Turkey. And when I opened my mouth, I started repenting and apologizing for being hard to live with and for not being as good a wife as I could be and all that. What was that about? Wow. I just wanted to tell him about being in Turkey. Wow. Look out, Jehovah Sneaky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jehovah Sneaky. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, wow. and I started crying and repenting. I didn't See, have this any idea lot. of doing that. I don't know whether it's me or not, but I'm hearing these stories all the time. I don't know whether God's doing something now on the earth. I don't know, but if it is, leave a comment down below if it's happening to you or you've been hearing about this as well. Because I don't know, yeah. this feels like God is just putting words in our mouth and and what we revealing, say, use me, do whatever you want. Yeah, right? and when revealing we forget we're saying that and revealing stuff <laughs> about other people around us to encourage them or to you know. Yeah, yeah. he's busy. Yeah. Whoa. But you know, don't you? I get up and say, God, my life is yours. Do whatever you want. Whoa. So. Yeah. That means when you open your mouth to you, say, hey, I had tacos for breakfast, you actually say, I'm so sorry. You're a heavenly target. <laughs> yes. And you pray that prayer. I know, isn't it great? Wow, yeah. I, listen. And then I he think, can shoot his arrows through you to anyone who needs that those love arrows. There's nothing funner than walking with Jesus. Nothing wow. funner. Wow. It, it's so, and you know, people say, oh, oh, you're so brave. He tells you to go places and you just go. Well, I don't think that's hard. I don't think that's risky. Right. I mean, if why would he send you if it went going to be fun exactly yep. and and who think True. and who's to say there's not risk by not going and staying where you are and be out of the center of god's will it's more riskier yeah because you're and not, if he sends you're me not to safe somebody, anywhere really if he sends me to somebody i say well he wants you to get 
healed or get better. And they go, well, how do you know? And I said, because he wouldn't send me here. Come on. Why would he? We got things to do. Yes. We don't have time to waste. He wouldn't be sending me here unless he's got something in mind. Wow. See, that's not being stuck up. No. That's just knowing God. Exactly. And and knowing his, his goodness is busting to get out to people and his healing. And he's the healer and he wants to come through you and... and Bust out yes. to other people, and his love wants to pour out. To, and we just say, if we we say yes, he'll he'll use us as the vessel. Best way to live. Wow. Hey, so I, now, when you do that, what's going on? You want to do the wows? Yeah. Well, what is God? Tell us what's going on, Mister Physical Manifestation. <laughs> Let's hear about it. What's going what on? Is Nathan? Uh, what is it? Well, I never used to manifest like that at all. It's funny you ask that. Um, I don't know. I think I just put it down to that my spirit almost leaps with inside of me and it makes my body respond. Oh, what does it feel like? It just feels like, um, it just, it, it feels like a rising up inside, an internal sort of like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I and, and I vocalize. <laughs> wow, I want to do it. <laughs> Home party. Wow. <laughs> or yes. backwards, wow. <laughs> I know, I know, I know a lot of people do that. I know. Yeah. Patricia King does it, Heidi does it, they all do it. They go, oh, you know. Yeah, and it's funny when I'm with Heidi, it happens a lot, and we actually do it at the same time without even. And also, heads. both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, yeah. In spirit, it's all like we, we we do it at the same time. We're with somebody, you know, wow, something's going on because you're actually doing it at exactly the same time, repeatedly, as you're together. It's like, okay, something's going on here. Mm. But I mean, I don't, I suppose I don't think about it much or be aware of it much because I know it's not, I don't know, I think, yeah, it's my, my flesh responds somehow to what's happening in my spirit in that moment. And it's usually with revelation. It's, my manifestations are mainly with revelation of, of, of something of God's goodness or testimony or because mm. deep in my heart, it's like anything of God is like, and when I see him move or I see him glorified or I see him, you know, praised or it, that my spirit is totally into it into him being lifted up and him being released and him. So it, mm. it's like my spirit rejoicing. How it leaps, fun is that? Yeah, it leaps with joy, I suppose, really, is what it is. I think that's fun. Yeah. I like it. Every time you do it, it cracks me up. I love it. I love it. It's so fitting somehow too, Nathan. Well, it does fit his personality. Yeah. Because you're so effervescent. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's funny how that – but I never used to be like that. I remember the first time it happened was after I listened to your dad – Preach. And I, I was at a conference. Adelaide? It didn't, it didn't, yeah, in Adelaide. I was there. 2007. I didn't. I know you were there. And you and Brock were there. We couldn't believe it. We didn't meet you. But we saw you up. I know you and Brock were dating. That's so funny. And then we met you later that same year. In That was January. We met you and Brock in Pemba. In Pemba in that same year in June. Yes. July. Crazy. June, July. Isn't that mm-hmm. crazy? But um, I, I, I missed one session at the conference. Anyway, my wife is having the craziest manifestations at that conference. That's another whole story. We'll talk about that when we pod- we're going to do a couples podcast soon with Christy and Brock and me and Sarah. Yes. But nothing happened with me. I mean, I remember I was weeping and Larry Taylor, you know Larry Taylor? Mm-hmm. He was preaching. Nothing happened with me. I was just weeping the whole time. And, and anyway, <laughs> the night we were in a hotel, we were doing a tour for Nickelodeon because we used to work a lot with Nickelodeon Australia. Mm-hmm. And we're in the hotel room, and I was, oh, I, somehow I got the session I missed with Roland, so I started watching it. Then all of a sudden, I'm lying on the bed watching it on the laptop, and oh, I started doing. Well, you weren't <laughs> even in the meeting; you were no. watching the video. Yeah, the, the, after the bed. Twenty four hours later, at the next wow. one in my hotel room, on tour with Nickelodeon, and this started happening, and I was going, funny. "Well, Sarah, what's going on?" And then, and that and that's how it started. That was my first manifestation. Was, so it kind of started funny. happening to both of you at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Time. Mine wasn't as full on. Sarah's, was, well, she caught a fireball from Roland, like just in the spirit. She, she just, Roland said, catch this. And she didn't even know Roland. And she was just down the front because she wanted more of God. And she just, and it was like you, she she just put her hands up and grabbed it. Like she didn't know, why did I do that? Like she didn't even know why oh, yeah. she put her hands up. And it was nothing. You know, I mean, to look at it, it's nothing. But she felt like she caught a fireball and all of a sudden she just, came back down and she just started, she was on her, sitting down on her knees, but she started running like this, but, but she wasn't going anywhere, just her <laughs> arms. And then her headband fell down over her eyes and then she, so she was she totally, completely blind. She oh goes, God, gosh. what are you doing to me? And then he just, she just started going faster and she started to sweat and she goes, God, why are you doing this? And God started revealing stuff to her. Oh, oh no, sorry, that was second. No, she started shaking it first. That was the shaking first. Then it moved to that running thing. And and she goes, God, why are you shaking me? You shouldn't be shaking. She goes, I'm shaking out all the... um." Unbelief, all the doubt and wow. unbelief, and she went, "What?" 
So he was wow. clearly walking you through it. And then with that thing when she Amazing. was running, he goes, what are you doing now? He goes, I'm... I'm, this is a, <laughs> I'm showing you what it's going to be like in the spirit. You're going to run blind for the rest of your life. Oh, wow. Whoa. And crazy stuff. So he walked her through these manifestations. We actually, when we were running the Harvest School, we used to teach on the manifestations because all, all sorts of people come to the Harvest School. So, you know, you get some people from conservative backgrounds, from full-on Pentecostal, mm-hmm. from, you know, new Christians, and a lot of them haven't seen it. Or people think, oh, why am I getting manifestations? God doesn't love me as much or, you know, and... <coughs> We've got a teaching about it's that. It's a real uh, journey for people. Yeah, that issue. It is, or and not it's issue, but yeah, and it's yeah. whether or not they experience that. Yeah, and I really encourage them. If you're not getting it, it's great, you know. And if you do get it, it's great. It doesn't matter. It's not about that at all. It's it's fully just about, you know, being with God and building your desire for Him. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. You know. When I said to my friend the other day, I said, I don't understand what all these manifestations. Can He come and? manifest and just be coming she goes it's not possible for God to come manifest and there not be a deposit come on I said well I guess that's true mm. but, you know when we watched Randy when I was talking about Randy Clark he was talking about that stuff as I was sitting there listening well, I thought oh I feel it coming on again for over an hour I laid on the sofa after that going oh <gasps> And then you'd feel it coming on and think, okay, I'm not jerking this time. Yeah, and you try to stop it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I did the same thing. When I when, I thought, I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah, it's probably just it. me. And what's going I on, know. man? I stood up to go to bed and my friend goes, you look like a piece of meat. <laughs> I think that meant you look wiped out. And I don't know <laughs> what goes on. I know. And I don't guess we need to know. But you know what? Know. One thing just came to my mind then. It's a humbling thing. <laughs> Scholars still don't know to this day when you say, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit or, mm-hmm. you, or led by the Spirit. In the terms that all those terms it uses the Spirit, they can't define where it's ta- whether it's talking about God's Spirit or man's Spirit. Oh. And a lot of scholars believe that because of the union, because you know when Paul says that you become one with God, when, mm-hmm. you, when you're born again, his Spirit and your Spirit, um, you know, mix... It's yeah. so intertwined that it's a holy place. And, you know, in your spirit, that's why he says follow your spirit, because your spirit in your spirit, man, you can't sin. It's only you sin in your soul or your flesh, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But the, your spirit's the holy place. Once you're born again, like, demonically, you can't be affected in your spirit if you're a yeah. Christian, because yeah. the, the demonic cannot enter that holy realm, because it's the spirit, you know? Yeah. Of course, you can get stuff happening in your soul and your flesh and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, they just, they still can't define. So there's such an intermingling and a union between your spirit and God's spirit that, you know, it's God is there with you. It's you and God together. And so, you know, wow. God's manifesting, your spirit's manifesting. It's, they're so intertwined, mm-hmm. never to be separated because mm. you're saved and you're born again. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> so crazy. So many but crazy things. I have got these crazy requests, Sandra, yep. because we're nearly at the I end. Hope you don't want me to sing. Well, yes, <laughs> in the spirit. No, I was going to see whether maybe you could impart over the airwaves to everyone listening to this podcast right now because you're called to impart. Yeah. Would that be okay? Well, let's give it a try. Yeah. I mean, who knows what it's going to look like or what it's going to, how you're going to do it. But People, a lot of fire when I do this, we all start sweating. Whoa. But I don't know how that works through the TV. But Come on. I'm willing to try. Apparently okay. things do happen through the TV though. Yeah. Well, apparently did yeah. with Randy. <laughs> yeah. Man, Randy may be calling me to impart to him through the TV. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. So we don't know where this is going to go. So just right. open yourselves up, guys, for an impartation. Mm. Whoa, from the All God right. pouring out in Bougainville. Well, Jesus. In yes, God. Jesus, we love you, Jesus. We yes. love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Wow. Lord, I confess that I don't really understand all this stuff about imparting. and it's. But here's what I know. It doesn't matter because I don't need to know anything. Yeah. Your ways are mysterious. Your ways are perfect. Your Jesus. ways are incredible. Yes, God. Wow. But I do know, Lord, that you imparted a spirit of revival. Whoa! And he told me to pass it on. So, Lord, I open up that suitcase wow. right now. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. And I ask you, Father, to impart your spirit of revival, which, Lord, the spirit of revival is a deeper revelation of your love. Yes, God. So, Jesus, right now, I ask for a deeper revelation of your love Whoa. for every person listening. Yes. Lord, would you touch them? Would you touch their spirit, man, to see you clearly? Mm-hmm. Would you give them eyes to see you? Would you give the eyes of their heart 
Wow. Give them new eyes to their heart, Lord, to see you. Yes, God. And Jesus, for those that need to feel your arms around them, would you let them physically feel you hugging them? Yes. Wow. Jesus. There's no more powerful name on earth than the name of Jesus. Wow. And you say in your word, I long to give my children good gifts that ask. <laughs> Lord, we're asking for that beautiful good gift of the revelation of your love. Wow. More, Jesus, more. Mm. Pour out your spirit. Wow. Pour out a revelation of your love on, on all of us. Yes, God. More, Jesus. Wow. More. More, Lord. More. More. Wow. For all those that are hungry and thirsty, yes. more. Yes. More, Lord. More. <sighs> Be that food and water to our spirit. Wow. Pour out, Jesus. Pour out. Mm. Pour out, Jesus. Pour out. Lord, take us all into the center of your heart and close the door and keep us in that place for the rest of our lives. Jesus, may we see the world yes. around us through your eyes. Mm. May your heart wrap around our heart so that as your heart beats, our heart beats. <clears throat> Show us what breaks your heart. Show us what brings you joy. And Holy Spirit, we ask for a revelation of how to worship our Father. Yes. In spirit and truth. Yes, 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 yes. And Jesus, we want you to feel loved. Yes. We want you to feel our love. Abba, Daddy, we want oh. you to feel our love for you. Wow. Increase our capacity to hold you, Jesus. Mm. Increase our capacity for you to flow through us to others, Jesus. Yes, yes, God. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Jesus, use us, Lord. Pour yourself out on us and pour through us onto others. Wow. Some more, Jesus. More, 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 Jesus. More of you. More of you is what we long for. Yes. More of you. Absolutely. Thank you for your revelation. Mm. Thank you for your spirit of truth. Yes. Thank you, Abba Father, for loving us so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit for teaching us. Wow. And Jesus, thank you for being the lover of our soul. Wow. Giving yourself for us. Thank you that you're our friend, our brother, yes. our father, our sister. Yes. Our best friend, the lover of our soul. Whoa. Jesus, hang on to us. Don't let us let go of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for who you are. You truly are all that and more. Whoa. In Jesus' name. Whoa. Amen. <sighs> wow. Feeling that one. So good. Now what do we Thank do you. for fun? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Man, I felt that one myself. Mm. Mm. Whoa. I don't know what y'all gonna do. We're just gonna sit here and float. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, we're just gonna segue right out here. You guys can keep on soaking. Put on some soaking music. But um, thanks for watching again, guys. This has been amazing to be with you and to just be with God and Sandra's Amen. journey with God and revival and be encouraged yeah. and keep in His presence, keep in the center of His heart. Whoa. Amen. And make some comments below. Oh, and come to our site, heartstonepictures.com. Yes. Check out some of our stories and check out Jesus in the Jungle. Yeah. Check out Ishmael. Yes. Yes. Follow the journey, heartstonepictures.com. Yeah. Yes. Yep. From the woman who's full of heart. Woo. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Ciao. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org.